and I said, you can still go to bars. Tell the bartender you're an alcoholic. I don't well, think that's good advice to give to somebody in a halfway house. If, like after this conversation, I'm gonna go out there, I'm gonna hug my kids. Why are you getting emotional? Oh, someone's at the door. I snorted coffee and sugar on New Year's Eve in jail. That does not surprise me in the slightest. Don't do it. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Tiff and Flip Show. I'm Tiffany Jenkins. And I'm Flip Adam. On this podcast, we discuss everything from addiction, recovery, family, even barbed wire. Whoa. Oddly specific. Yep. Barbed wire. That reminds me of Pamela Anderson. <laughs> yes. What? Because I was going to say that, but then I was like, that is a weird connection. No. Because she had the barbed wire tattoo. It was yeah. iconic. And she did a movie called Barbed Wire. With her barbed wire tattoo. Yes. I don't know what to do with my hair, as you can see. At first I thought, oh, behind the ears, show off my giant hoop earrings. But then I was like, no, that's too obvious, Tiffany. Let it back down. But now it just looks like I'm having a medical situation. I'm uh, My earrings are getting progressively larger every episode. Just so I don't know if anyone noticed. I'm so excited that people loved, they love the hoop earrings. I know. You give me one compliment. That's it. That's all my closet's filled with now is hoop earrings. Yeah, I noticed. Why were you in my closet? That's a story for another day. Um, did you know <laughs> that uh, I love our fans so much and uh, somebody felt the need to tell us this? And I don't know why, but I'm kind of digging it. So it says, I just watched episode 20 with Uranus. Did you know the skin around your lips is called mucosa? I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the skin around your butthole is called mucosa. So when you do your lips, when you do like that with your lips, it makes the same thing as your butthole. That's so crazy. And they uh, went on to say that um, you're welcome for that vision Thank that you. I just gave you. Uh, so looking to, forward to seeing you guys here in a little bit. Yay, that's exciting. Thank you so much for that information. Just so everybody knows, that's the one singular reason I haven't gotten lip fillers yet. Is because of buttholes? So I could do cat butthole mouth. Okay. I mean, hey, listen, sometimes you just got to hold on to things, you know? Like I won't, like I won't relapse because I have such a cool clean date that I don't want to change it. Oh. So like whatever you need yeah. to like hold on to. Yeah. So like if you want to do butthole lips and that's why it stops you from doing fillers. I'm probably going to do them. Well, don't be surprised if I insert a bunch of duck noises. I'm going to insert a bunch of fists into your butthole. mouth. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm not going to fist you for <laughs> duck noises. I'll show him. <laughs> You know, we started off this episode, uh, and we're going to probably finish it off, having no idea what we're going to talk about. Wait. I just wanted to let everybody know because it was a thing, and you and I both are really good about making plans, and we are subpar about following through. Mm. And I just want to tell you that, one, I am super thankful for you, and two, you, like, did it. Business cards. <gasps> business cards ladies and gents business cards no big deal qr code you scan it, it takes you to to the pages no uh, biggie as for vegas yes as much as i would love to take credit for this flip i cannot uh well that just i take back everything i said you should okay. uh all of the credit goes to jessica who who reminded us who not only reminded us she ordered them she messaged you she messaged me, reminding she us. She designed them. She designed them. She, she knows. And she, she knows. ordered them. Okay. Well, I take back every nice thing I said about you then. Yeah. Don't. I can't take one singular thing of credit other than she sent it to me and I was like, yes, it, lo it looks great. She's like, how many do I order? And I told her and that was it. Shout out Jessica. Yeah. Thank you so much. I love it. Jessica I was, S. I was literally just scanning QR codes, even though like... There are pages anyway, so I already have them, but I would just like, boop. Yeah. Very so cool. cool. So cool. You're very official. I know. I gave one to the gas station attendant. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> He's like, I don't want this. You're like, take it. He is of Middle Eastern descent, and I don't think he understands okay. what it was about. But Yeah, so we got QR codes. We're ready for Vegas. I got a bunch of dresses. I, I tried them all on. It was a nightmare. Really? Yeah, because 
I don't know if you know, can relate to this, but when your body is not in its peak form, like when you know that it could be better. So whenever you're in any state other than that one, you just feel like a friggin' Oompa Loompa. Well, I was trying on dresses and I was getting like hot and sweaty and they were sticking and I'm pale and I didn't have makeup on at the time. And I just felt like a marshmallow wearing a dress. Okay. That's uh, not the feedback I got from my wife. She said you slayed. She's crazy. She said they you guys found some badass clothes and you look stunning. She's really sweet. She's lying. Okay. But yeah, but it's gonna be great. I'm gonna it's gonna be fine because we're getting spray tanned. So you know, I so here's the thing. What? Okay, and this is just this is a hot take. Okay. Cause there's really no happy medium, right? You spend too much time in the sun cancer not enough time in the sun cancer tanning bed cancer um spray tan probably cancer here's my thing though why why does it make the hands and in the bottom of the feet orangies yeah so because you move them so much so it moves and gathers into the corners and the nooks and crannies i don't like it like my grandfather jake used to say (laughs) yo he was a hit did you see he was a hit what I sent you. Yes, I responded. Do you hate it or love it along I, the same? I, I ordered 10. Okay. Should we tell him? We may or may not have some merch coming for you. <laughs> coming for you, like with knives. Like it's going to kill you. Yeah. We have quite the itinerary for Vegas. How do you feel about that? We have what? You sent like a three-day schedule. Yeah. Like events and stuff. We're not going to any of those. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. I will be handing out business cards at all of them. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yes, I can see it. I can see it. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be swimming in the pool, handing out. <laughs> I love it. Laminated. Yeah. The first night there is a comedy night, which I think I'm gonna go to. Okay. Second day is a all day pool party, which you will not be attending because you don't like the sun. It's it takes place in the sun. And there's people in bathing suits. Okay. And it's going to make me really sad. So I'm not, I, I don't know. And then there's a nightclub, which I can't go to because I'm an alcoholic. What are your thoughts on that as an addict? How do you feel? Like if I was like, do you want to go to the nightclub party? It's a masquerade thing. Um, well, I would totally go, but I wouldn't go f- like the alcohol wouldn't be like my main concern. My main concern would be hot and sweaty. Because that's what nightclubs are, is hot and sweaty. That's your main concern. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, the alcohol doesn't bother me because, like, you can't even... I've been in situations, not necessarily a nightclub, but, like, in early, early recovery. Um, Not this time, but the time before. Like, there was this dentist dude who was in the halfway house with me. He was an alcoholic. And he's like, I don't know what to do because, like, I used to go to bars and, like, he was trying to meet women. And I said, you can still go to bars. Tell the bartender you're an alcoholic and tell him to keep the Sprite with a a lime wedge coming. Mm. And so if you have. I don't think that's good advice to give to somebody in a halfway house. If you. Well, he's still clean. Is he? Yeah. Yeah. Got his license back. Got married. But, like, he was he was struggling and I actually, I went with him one time and we just had Sprite with a lime. And if you have that, nobody asks if you want to drink. Well, the thing is, is like, uh, I went to a concert and we were sitting at a bar waiting to like go in and we had a Diet Coke with like a lemon in it. And in my head, I'm like, if somebody recognizes me and sees me sitting at the bar drinking what looks like a rum and Coke, like rumors are going to fly. So I only drink like bottles of water so that people can't ever be like, oh my gosh, that girl from Dwindling the Drink and Relapse. I think about that with Haritos. You know what I mean? Harito. I don't know what you're saying. It is a Mexican soda and it comes in a glass bottle. It's so, labeled? Yeah, it's labeled, but how do you grab a bottle? You know what I mean? Your hand basically covers the the label so it looks like I'm sipping on some beer. Lean. Oh. What is lean? It is. Sipping on lean. Prescription cough syrup. 
Oh, <laughs> that reminds me of a story. About cough syrup. About a dog that escaped. Huh? This, all right, you're going to make me look dumb. No, well, you're going to pretend like you don't know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to connect the dots. You just talked about it on your podcast. When? A dog that escaped. Are we referring to Puff Daddy? You were at your girlfriend's house and their dog escaped and oh, you were chasing it. And then yes. you found a cup of lean. Yes. Well, I mean li liquid hydrocodone, but... Is that not lean? No. It is... That is a liquid painkiller. All right. I don't care anymore. Okay. All I know is it's in some songs. Uh, like every rap song from when we were in high school. Yeah. I would not want to be at a club, I don't think. Well, I mean, like I said, I wouldn't because uh, hot and sweaty. Yeah, no, I don't like the environment. The loud noise. Somebody's going to be like, Tiffany, cool, and give me your hair. Let's do dance. And I'm going to be like, no, I don't want to. And they're going to be like, stop being a pussy. Come <laughs> dance. I love you. And I'm going to be like, I don't want to fucking dance, Cheryl. Yeah, no, that's not uh, my idea of a good time. You know what I am going to try to do? Take a nap. Boy. People are concerned that I took a nap recently. <laughs> they're, they're worried about me. I, I got I got a, a couple texts. Who? First of all, how'd they know you took a nap? Second of all, why are they concerned? I don't know how they knew I took a nap now that I think about it. <laughs> um, But uh, because I seem ho-hum. And I told them I'm good. My eight years is Monday. I know. I'm so excited. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. They say that when you're approaching your clean date anniversary, shit starts popping off. Yeah, shit's not popping off. I'm just sleepy. I'm just so sleepy. I'm just so sleepy. I'm just so sleepy. Do you think there's health things going on? You know, um, no. I did, and that's why I cut way back on the energy drinks. And I actually didn't drink energy drinks for a few days. Same. Um, but then I still was just sleepy. I just think that um, I'm going 100 miles a minute and it's just catching up with me. All right. But you you have to like talk about it with these people who are concerned about you. Oh, I did? Come on. Listen, anybody that texts in, I talk with them. I don't know what I would do if you got swept away. That, uh, that's how I think of addiction. Do you know what uh, my son told me right before I came over here? What? He looked at me. <laughs> He looked at me. He said, you're going to die when you're 39. <laughs> what? Out of nowhere. We got back from the football game. We won 33 to zero. And he looked at me very, uh, very uh, Hannibal Lecter-esque and said, you're going to die when you're 39. And I said, well, you better enjoy these last few months because I'm going to be 39 come October. I said, so you only got me till October. And do you know what he said? Ladies Flip. and gentlemen, what? Yes. Hey, you know what's so funny is when we were trying to figure out the lighting, you raised your hand, and I said, uh, in what circumstance are you going to raise your hand on the podcast? And you just did. How weird is that? That is weird. Question. Answer. Yes. Lady uh, in the back. Um, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> no idea. No. Premonition, maybe. No, I don't like... Listen to me. If my child out of nowhere said... You're going to die at 39. I would pull the car over. I would take the child out, put it on the side of the highway, yeah. and leave it. Well. See, you don't read into that? No. No, no, no. Because he didn't do it in a creepy voice. Maybe if he did it in a creepy voice. No, it's even worse if he doesn't. If he just says it matter of fact, like, <laughs> you're going to die when you're 39. Like, what? It was very similar to that. Did you ask him to elaborate? No. All right. Because when it's my time, it's my time. Oh, I think more importantly, why is your kid possessed is what we need to be focusing on. Yep, 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 yep. It's uh, the red dyes in the food. <laughs> I think that's a real thing. I know. Uh, we did take him to the pediatrician and got him approved for food therapy. Oh, wait. I thought you guys were already doing that. So we were doing it at a sensory place, but they weren't like experts per se in food therapy okay because we thought maybe it was like a uh, uh do you want to tell them a texture issue a little bit or no um so my son as a baby used to eat everything and just one day 
it just stopped. And the only thing he would eat was peanut butter and jellies. Now, the only thing he'll eat is plain waffles. He'll eat peanut butter and jelly. He did recently start eating eggs, hmm. which was a nice Big change deal. of pace. Um, but it's pretty much just like cereal. Like when we pack his lunch, I feel like the worst parent ever because it's lit, yeah. it's it's like Pringles and uh, Ritz crackers and uh, the cheesy popcorn. But if we don't pack that stuff, he won't eat. Interesting. Yeah. For the longest time, my wife uh, would pack an Uncrustable every single day. <gasps> And then throw it away. Well, I know it's very real because I've witnessed it, obviously, um, with him. And there's been times where I've even made jokes when it comes to like food. Like one time I went to accidentally take a bite of his food. We might have talked about this, but and he was inconsolable and right. couldn't finish. And yeah, you felt terrible. I did. I felt so bad. Yeah. And so um, we're we think and so does the pediatrician that the and it makes sense the lack of nutrition and kind of stuff that he's getting is having an effect on his attitude mm. and kind of acting out and stuff like that which makes sense you know mm. what i mean you're not fueling your body with anything of substance yeah other than the random times he eats eggs um right we took him to to the pediatrician and ironically the pediatrician went to school with my wife and she was like yeah but you remember yours you're so small you're so i'm like that's not the same thing <laughs> it doesn't is that how the pediatrician talked yeah exactly verbatim you're so small. Yeah, but you're so small <laughs> she was small and um but she got him approved for there's a food therapy place in north bradenton Love it. Like an official like food therapy place. That's so exciting. Yeah, yeah. So I'm excited about that. I'm hoping to get him some some kind of uh, help because it's so weird. Like I thought he was just being dramatic and like yeah. I made him eat a piece of broccoli once and he threw up. Yeah, I believe it. I believe it. Kids, I mean, everybody has sensory stuff, weird stuff, uh, weird, you know, according yeah. to whatever. Um, but no, it's very real. And I'm so glad that he's getting some help with that i mean where was where was that though when i was a kid i used to have the brussels sprouts all you had to do was just throw up and yeah make a scene i um i just went and got a whole bunch of blood work done holy crap you scared me with that picture don't look if you're squeamish there's a whole bucket a whole gaggle of geese of little vials the lady who took my blood was like i am concerned about when you leave here you need to not drive, walk over to Publix and get some orange juice and some crackers. Like this is, we usually don't take this much blood at once. And I'm like, do it. I love a challenge. Take all my blood. Kill me. I'm done. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I'm getting every test known to man done to find out what the F is going on. What is going on? I don't know. I just have weird stuff symptoms i've talked about them so much nobody wants to hear about them anymore okay i just wasn't sure if it was something new nope but i did get some of the results back i have high ldl cholesterol which not surprising Taco because Bell. i've been eating really healthy ever since i got a boyfriend you have a beautiful turning table i do i'm gonna try to get my wife to see adele in vegas sorry that's what i meant to say earlier continue high cholesterol my wife does not like adele and i love her and she's performing in Vegas, and I'm gonna try to go continue. Okay. High cholesterol. I think you should. High cholesterol. High cholesterol. What else? And I have very low iron, which is not surprising, dude, because I'm always like, why do I bruise so easy? I look like a walking corpse. I think that's a bit harsh, but okay, continue. I do. If you saw my legs, you'd be like, damn, this looks like something from CSI. Miami or yeah, just the regular one? Miami. Okay. No, no. Miami. Everybody's tan. I know. The other one. Whichever okay. one takes place in the snowy village. That's yeah. the one. When they show the legs of the dead person in the woods. That's what my legs look like, dude. They're so bad. They get so bruised so easily. And so that makes sense. And I have really low vitamin D. Not anymore. Okay. I think from the sun. Oh, that D. Is what I meant. Yeah. It's because you don't like the sun. Yeah, it's not that I don't like the sun. I don't no, like it's exactly <laughs> it. It's one thousand percent. I've got no beef 
with the sun itself. I've got beef with what it takes to get into the sun. You have to take your clothes off. You have to shave your legs. You have to walk around in like no clothes. Like if we're talking about laying out, not just in general to go outside. But uh, yeah, I don't like all that. And then you get hot and sweaty, dude. And it's like, and then you get burned and then you're like going to get skin cancer and it scares me. So I'd rather just be a sickly woman who has to give 10,000 pints of blood. I know, but they're testing me for lupus. Do you have get butterfly rashes? What's that? A rash that looks like a butterfly. I don't think so. I think that's a lupus thing. I get these. Put a picture there. And I get these. And I get this. Oh boy, that's bad. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully, you put up something bad there. And know. last but not least, I get this. Oh no. It's just going to be a picture of like a Sasquatch in the woods for no reason. Okay, cool. Speaking that's of, funny. what's our background going to be today? Hmm. Uh, people really liked the garden, Guardians of the Galaxy I know. spaceship. Uh, people didn't like the bird's nest because it was too busy. Yeah. People liked the soft pink, lavender-esque yeah. thing. I did too. I know. That's because I didn't do the green screen and it actually looked good. Um, I'm thinking Hobbits. Hobbit Village. Have you seen the hotels on like sides of mountains? Why'd you say it like that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Probably because I'm so sleepy. Okay. Are you sleepy right now? Oh my gosh. I'm in a perpetual state of sleepiness. You should go to the doctor, Flip. Get your Billy Rubin checked. No, nah, Billy Rubin's fine. Mine's not. Really? Is it high? No, it's low. Oh, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Do you know what Billy Rubin is? Yeah. What? It's when somebody rubs your belly. And calls you Rubin? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's uh, dead blood cells. So your body, your liver filters out dead blood cells like once a week. And when your bilirubin's too high, it's not filtering out the dead blood cells. And then it attacks your nervous system and then you get itchy head to toe. And then you get friction burns on your fingers from itching so much. And then you hallucinate and then you think you're going to die. And then you're running sprints in your cul-de-sac at 3 o'clock in the morning. And when your significant other tries to come out and ask you what you're doing, you say, stop that. You're embarrassing me. I'm trying out for the baseball team. Don't you see the coaches over here? And then you look again and there's no coaches. And then you realize you're just in your cul-de-sac barefoot in your underwear at three o'clock in the morning. That is a thing that happened. 1,000%. Because you told us. Yep. And, and I didn't know it was due to your bilirubin. Yeah, that's what, uh, because my liver was all jacked up, my bilirubin was through the roof and the bilirubin, the dead blood cells attack your nervous system. That's very scary. Yeah, super itchy. Not fun. Don't recommend it. All right. I'll not do it then. Um, yeah, so I'm going, but I'm waiting for the rest of my results. I have a lot of test results coming back. And I know this is really bad, but I'm so excited. Yeah, you want answers. I keep checking Quest like every five seconds. Like I'm like I'm trying to wait and see if I made it into college is how it feels. Like waiting for my results. I'm like, here we go. Is it lupus? Is it Lyme? What is it? It's got to be something. Hope it's not Lyme. I ho I don't think it is. What if you have like something new that's like never been like whatever? Are you going to get to name it? If so, you know what I'm naming it. What? J. Curry. J. Curry is disease. Without a doubt. If you're watching this and you're like, what are they talking about? Freaking catch up on our episodes. Yeah, that part. I, yeah. I've been eating really healthy though. What you been eating? Like all kinds of shit. Like last night I had asparagus, lemon butter chicken, and uh, sweet potato cubes. That's weird. I didn't know DoorDash delivered that. That's because I don't order DoorDash. My man is a chef. Okay. There we go. And he refuses to make delicious fatty things, only healthy things. But even the kids are eating it. He, that's interesting. That's interesting. Why? Well, no, because I love cooking super unhealthy things well i specifically told him that i'm miserable and i want to be healthy but okay. even when i go back on it and i'm like remember that thing i said i was crazy back then let's have lasagna he's like nope not doing it like he's very what's the word stern 
Not stern. Firm. Um. <laughs> uh, disciplined. Damn, what's that like? Don't know. I'm being forced to know. Good for you. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, it's very helpful to me. So I just sneak food when he's not around. Guess what I get to do tomorrow? <gasps> Dress up like the Easter Bunny. No, God, oh. no. Ugh, that just sounds hot. Okay. It sounds so hot. I'm I'm cooking at the restaurant tomorrow. Are you? Yeah, the uh, egg cook told my mother-in-law this morning, or this afternoon, hey, by the way, I can't work tomorrow. Really? Yep. So who's going to watch your kids? Uh, my mom had stayed the night. She stayed the night Thursday night and Friday night because it was my aunt's birthday. And so I called her and I said, because she was out with Ella and my aunt, and I said, you got to take Ella for the night and I'll come pick her up tomorrow. And then uh, Jordan's going to a buddy's house. Tonight? No, tomorrow. I'm dropping him off before work and I'm going to go some eggs for a couple hours that's exciting can you get can you say can can you steal something from the restaurant and bring it home you know what i really friggin love that cashew chicken salad i'll have to uh, run it by your boyfriend first i have to make sure you're not uh cutting any corners wow yep no i'm just kidding that's healthy yeah we can do that hell yeah oh i was about to give you the business yeah yeah smuggle me one dude like we don't, we can keep it on the down low. We don't even got it's salad. That doesn't count. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, what I'm talking about though, the cranberry croissant thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I Talk. get to see you tomorrow. We're having fun Easter time. I know all sorts of Easter festivities. Oh, can I tell you that I was at the dollar store and this woman came up to. I was picking out these like plastic eggs, and this woman's like, "How oh, did you see that Easter program this morning?" And I was like, "No." I didn't. What was it? And she's like, yeah, there was this group of people and they went around door to door and they knocked on the door. And if they saw that the kids had eggs or Easter decorations, they just started shooting. What? Yeah. <clears throat> and I was like, do what? <laughs> she's like, yeah, it's not about Jesus anymore. It's about the Easter Bunny, and that's the problem. And God told me I shouldn't tell this story. This is going to be very I'm, controversial. I'm so here for it. This is just something that happened. I'm not stating my opinion or anything. And this reenactment of her voice is exactly how she spoke. She said, God spoke to me and told me to come here today and deter people from picking out Easter things because they've forgotten the reason for the season. And I was like, amen, for sure. For sure. I'm going to get these still, though, because I have kids. And, like, I can't just be like, sorry, Easter's canceled because Jesus, like, it's going to be like a conversation that I have to have and, like, give them a heads up. Yeah. Because I've already been hyping them up. Yeah. Who's ready for Easter? Are you guys excited for friggin' Easter? And then to be like, guys, just kidding. Easter's canceled. They'd be, you know, they wouldn't understand. So, yeah. If she would have caught me before I filled my cart with Easter stuff, maybe I would have put some of it back. No, you wouldn't. She encouraged me to, but. Dang. That's yeah. wild. That's wild. Where are these uh, shootings taking place? I don't know. I didn't even look into it because it made me sad. If it's true, it's shocking and it's sad. But I don't know if that's true. She made it like it was an Easter program. And I'm like, that's so cool. They're showing Easter shows already. What could it be? Like, she's like, did you see the Easter program? And I was like, today? They're already doing it? What is it? Tell me everything. I'm so excited. Yeah. And then it got so dark. And I'm like. <clears throat> and then I was waiting for John Quinones to pop out. Do you know who that is? No idea. It's not funny when I have to explain it, Flip. But he's the guy from What Would You Do? Okay. Is that what it's called? What, 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 what would you do? No, that was a show back in the day on Nickelodeon. Oh, that's a dark topic. Did you watch it? No. I'm going to, though. We started to. Your wife has been down a rabbit hole. I Trust me. I know. She messaged me yesterday. Yeah, no. But she's, in a, she's in a bad spot right now. She's like, my kids haven't eaten. Yeah. I don't know where they are, but I can't stop Googling. Yeah. That's so sad. That, what, is, what is that? 
specifically with you and my wife, I can assume that other people do it. But, like, just love the super, like, depressing, like, ruin your whole life thing and just dive headfirst into it. I don't know if it's so much that we love it. I think it's so interesting psychologically, like those kinds of things, like those rabbit holes. Like, because you look at the world and you think it's one way. And then suddenly something comes and shakes up your reality. And you're like, there's no way that all of this time I've been wrong. And so you go searching for evidence to the contrary. That's what I do anyway. So... So like this, for example, I haven't gone down a rabbit hole about this because I don't want to, but I definitely go down like pigeons, definitely government robots. You know what I'm saying? One time I had a pet pigeon. Go on. I was uh, incarcerated at Manatee uh, County Correctional Facility and they have a fully functioning farm and I worked on the horse barn. So a cop would take me from the jail, drop me off at this horse barn all day, and I'd have to, uh, you know, muck the stalls and, like, do all that stuff and let these horses out. And the rest of the day, I'm just chilling, working out on the farm, you know. And uh, there was a pigeon that showed up, and I started feeding him corn. And then he showed up every day, and he had a little bracelet. It was a tracker, but it was a bracelet. (laughs) And I named him. I thought you gave him the bracelet as a friendship token. No, but I made him fat. And I felt so bad when I was getting ready to leave. Because (laughs) my man was struggling to fly. Because I was just feeding him so much. That's so cute, though. Yeah, I named him Chubby. That's rude, a little bit. He liked it. He kept coming back for the conversation. Did he? Yep. I feel like... In the mental headspace that I was at when I was in jail, I would absolutely have conversations with pigeons. Oh, God. I l- talked about the meaning of life. Yeah. I asked him what it was like being a pigeon. Yeah. Like, how was the views? What did he say? Um, He didn't say much. Oh. He just twitched a lot. That's... And sometimes when I would say things, he would, like, twitch extra. So I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend. You know, his batteries were probably running low. I don't know. I think that would be, dude, when I was in jail, if they would have taken me outside to just chill on a frigging farm, it would have been a dream come true. Oh, it was legendary. Because you don't realize what you take for granted until you're in effing jail. And I know you guys make fun of me because I was only there for like four months, 120 days, which if you think about it, that's like half a year. Yep. Not really, but okay. Scientifically, if you do the math and then you subtract the quantum physics, it's it's about a half a year. I mean, four months. But okay. It's really close to a half a year. And it kind of just becomes your life. And so for me, like when we would go out in the yard. <laughs> the concrete barricades continue. Yeah. And it wasn't even like access to the real world because it was like a fence on the roof. So it's like... And you, you don't realize the feeling of rain on your skin. Oh, God, that was the one thing. How magical it is. Oh the feeling of sunshine on your skin. Yeah. Oh, someone's at the door? Well, I have to look now because there's people shooting people. For oh, he's got a toy handgun. You're lying. It's, I knew it was you. As soon as he said toy handgun. <laughs> Are you okay? He has an actual toy handgun. What are the odds? This kid at the door. What are the odds? No, no, no. You're good. You're good, buddy. You're good. No, you're good. Okay. I what? What is that? What's in there? It's a cap gun. Yeah, it's a cap gun. It doesn't have anything in it. Okay. <laughs> so you just came over to, to shoot us, or what? What are you doing here? I'm so scared. I'm so scared right now. Hey, uh, we got we got little kids in here though, so let's not play with a gun, okay? Thank you. Yeah, holster your what? We- Thank you. Yes, very good. That's. Do you have a concealed carry permit? <laughs> <laughs> I was just kidding. Oh, it's getting worse. It's getting worse. Make it. Stop. I believe you. Make it stop. Uh, don't. Okay. Cool. 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 I would like to tell you about this kid. No. I'm obsessed with him. Really. Yep. I was driving out of the neighborhood the other day. He was riding by on a uh, Razor scooter 
dressed like a colonial soldier for no reason on a Sunday. A man right out of old Grandpa Jake Ree's heart. <laughs> yes, for no reason. And I texted his mom and I'm like, you know, your son is dressed like George Washington right now, driving down the road. She's like, I know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I think um, I think that's par for the course. I think if, you know, my son comes out of the room dressed like George Washington, like so many questions that I'm just not going to ask. Just do you. Yeah. So where were we? We were talking about... Uh, I don't remember. Farms. The kid showed up with a cap gun. Farms. Um, jail. Feeling Birds. right on your skin. Pigeons aren't real. Ah, debatable. Um, and... So the fully functioning farm, right? Yeah. Which is super cool. Oh, no, it's not, though. Super cool. We're talking about manatee. Yeah. Yeah, I, w I was in manatee jail. Yeah. And I would see, like, a chicken run by the window. Yeah. And then later on that night, they're like, we're having chicken for dinner. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Yeah. They got Roscoe. Like, there's no way that I can, like, to know that everything that I ate came from out back. Yeah. Freaks me out. The eggs, everything. They have the chicken coops. They have uh, they have everything. They served an orange with every meal. They have a uh, slaughterhouse there. That's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you know, trigger warning. Whatever. You Peter. can't. That's not how trigger Peter. warnings. Shout out, Peter. Um, Work. We love animals. Um, but uh, the fully functioning farm, I would. I got to play with horses all day. I can't imagine. That would be such a nice reprieve from the grayscale dungeon. Do you want to know the weird thing? They wouldn't allow you to have facial hair if you were in the pod. Like if you were in the working pod. Yeah. No facial hair, but you could have a mustache. So I grew the gnarliest Yosemite Sam mustache ever. Did you really? Oh, God. That thing was legendary. I would have loved to have seen pictures. Yeah. Do you know what we did uh, as far as beauty and upkeep? We would take a string out of our socks and tie it so that it formed a circle. And then one girl who was like the beautician of the pod would thread our eyebrow hairs out using this string. You like cross it like Jacob's Yo, letter. Jail is the most innovative. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like just the the engineering mm -hmm. behind some of the things. Did you ever make whippets? No. Whips, not whippets, whips. It's where you take jelly packets and coffee and you oh, mix yeah, yeah, it yeah, for yeah. like hours. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we did that with butterscotch candies. Mm. You crush them. And, and then it becomes like a whipped cream and you put it right here yeah. and lick it off. Yeah, and then you see sounds. And then you see sounds. I snorted coffee and sugar on New Year's Eve in jail. That does not surprise me in the slightest. Don't do it. It burns. It burns. So bad. I see you really uh, took your uh, punishment seriously. <laughs> <laughs> it was New Year's Eve. <laughs> what do you expect? We were hey, partying. Listen, I get it. I get it. Just the, the things that took place there are just crazy. Dude, I did some shit in there. Have you seen them make uh, tattoo ink? I haven't seen it done, but I've heard about it. They take a chess piece and they burn it and they make like this like cone out of cardboard and so when it burns up the ash sticks to the cardboard and they scrape it up and then they mix it and it makes tattoo ink that's wild yeah i had to pick and poke but i gotta cover it up with thor i was gonna ask where it is yeah you can just see the little eye you see the eye right there mm -hmm. that was it said impossible is nothing that doesn't even make sense that's the beauty of it you know? Impossible is nothing. No regrets. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I would have absolutely done a pick and poke if I could have figured it out. We tried to make hooch. Dude, dude, dude. I was so stupid. Okay. So in order to do that, you have to like ferment f fruit. So I would like take everybody's orange peels and shove them into my socks. And then when we went out to the yard, I would like toss them in the corner of the yard so that it would ferment. Or whatever, except I'd always, it would always just get eaten by ants. And like I, people would, it, it was like, not, it didn't work. But this one girl got caught with hooch in her cell. I guess she was making it in the toilet. Yeah. So what we did 
was we had uh, shampoo bottles. Mm -hmm. VO5? Did you guys have VO5? That's all we were allowed. I don't remember what we were allowed. I still can't smell it. It's triggering. Um, But you clean it out, and how you clean it out is you put hot water from the hot pot and orange peels and just leave it in What's a hot pot? Uh, A thing you put water in and it heats it up. You had that? Yeah. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do I mean? I mean, what do you mean? What do I mean? What do you mean? We had a hot pot. In jail? Yeah. At Manatee? No. No, I think it was uh, yeah, cause why Middlesex w- County. Why would you give inmates a hot pot? That seems stupid. But you, but you know what, though? Nobody ever acted out. Wild. Yeah. And um, so then you do that, and it takes the like uh, shampoo smell and taste out of it. Mm-hmm. And then you take your orange peels, your sugar packets, and some bread and fill it up with the hot water. And then you got to burp it every so often. And then it is the most disgusting thing that you've ever experienced mm-hmm. in your entire life. I would have drank it, though, if it would have got me drunk. Can I tell you a crazy story? Yeah, I'd love to hear it with my ears. Um, so... One time uh, when I was a, a, a incarcerated in Middlesex County Jail, one of the COs, I went up there because I was a traveling trainer for a restaurant Okay. and got addicted to heroin. Hate it when that happens. I know. Such an unfortunate series of events. <laughs> and um, I was this dude's boss. Fast forward like 11 months later, I'm in jail. He's a corrections officer. Oh, no way. Yeah. And... Um, I was, you know, like I would see him, I'm like, hey, what's up, man? You know, and he he got to see me, and then I ended up becoming a trustee. And 3 o'clock in the morning, he used to work the overnight shift. 3 o'clock in the morning, he knocks on my bunk, and he throws a bag onto my bunk. And it was a foot-long meatball sub. It was a pack of Newport 100s. And it was a pornographic magazine. What? You want to talk about... I was king of the castle instantly why did he do it i think he was just trying to look out for me you knew him before this yeah i was his boss and then he's like yo man i'm gonna put my job at risk by giving you contraband i'm a cool guy wow yeah and so i took the porno mac this is what guys do okay i took the porno mac to the law library and I laminated the pages, and I used to rent out the pages. What kind of jail is this? Middlesex County. 150 dudes, three stories, all open bay. So there's no cells. Wait. Yep. No way. Yeah. That was. Where are the bathrooms? In the middle. Yeah. Wild. Wild. That's where I got addicted to Gossip Girl. Mm-mm. Shout out Gossip Girl. That was like my favorite show for years. Did they roll a TV in? We had th- up there. It's a lot different than down here because up there gangs are like a real thing. Like it's real life. And so because of that, not that it was segregated, but like to keep things fair. And I, I shit you not. They had a Spanish TV, a white TV, and an African-American TV. I'm getting emotional. Can you tell? No. Why are you getting emotional? (laughs) Not because of the segregation. (laughs) Because of Gossip Girl? I know it did it to me too. No, I just remembered Christmas time in jail. Oof. They, it was Christmas time in jail and they rolled the TV in and put this Lifetime Christmas music or Christmas movie on. Yeah. And I cried like a baby because it was the first time I had heard music in months It was the first time I had seen people wearing like colored clothing in months. Like it just reminded me of the outside world. And I remember thinking like if I ever get out there again, I will never come back here. Pass the coffee so I can snort it. (laughs) We're having a moment. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, But yeah, I forgot all about that. And it made me a little teary eyed thinking about it. But um. (laughs) Yeah, and there was uh, has, tr- there was trustees. There had to be two white trustees, two Spanish trustees, two black trustees. 
Really? Yeah, it was it was really like that. Interesting. Yeah, and so um, we broke down the cigarettes and sold them, and I had a locker full of commissary, and I enjoyed that foot long meatball sub with my with my, with my buddies with your booby pictures. I mean, it was it was a vile porno magazine. How did the gar- shout out Buttman magazine sponsor this episode? But man, magazine. That is not true. But we mm. would like sponsors. Would we consider but man? I would consider but man. Desperate times. Um, how did the corrections officers not see laminated pornography going around the cells? Oh, you know, you know, uh, jail life. There's a lot of sneaking around and stuff. I just can't believe you had access to a laminator. Law library. That's so like and a library. Law library. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's a it's a different it's a different world. It is a different world. I have never experienced anything like that. And when I say like Sarasota Manatee County are nothing like that, like scary. Like actually not after a while you get used to it and you're just like, Oh, so and so got stabbed. Okay. Mm. Like no big deal. But like in the <laughs> beginning you're like what the I remember <laughs> A girl getting tased right in front of me. Yeah. And nobody, I looked around and nobody was phased. And I was like, <gasps> pee was dribbling down my leg. I'm like, what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. It was crazy. Do you think you'd ever go on the show 60 days in? Like if we didn't do this and people didn't know who you were? Yeah, but I wouldn't be entertaining. I talk about that all the time. What do you mean you wouldn't be entertaining? Because I just eat food and sleep. Yeah, no, you're because on I know a mission. How to jail. I know how to jail. Right. But you'd be on a mission. Yeah, no. That's why it would not be good. I'd be like, okay, yeah, I got you. And then I'd get in there and I'd be like, oh my God, so sleepy. You know me. Yeah. I'd get in there and I'd be like, where are the drugs <laughs> for me to snort? <laughs> Who here has illegal contraband I could get? <laughs> Nothing strange here. <laughs> like, I would just be so obvious. Yes. I'd be like, you miss. The heroin. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Pass it to me. Where are the marijuana cigarettes? <laughs> Please. I have lots of money to buy all the marijuana <laughs> cigarettes you have. <laughs> Who here has a shank made from a toothbrush <laughs> that they are going to stab someone with? Is it you, ma'am? You look shanky. Like, <laughs> I would be the worst. I'd be the. I'd be so obvious. I'd be caught on day one, dude. For sure. For sure. I. It, you know what's so weird to think about is, and and that's normally what anniversaries for me. It's a lot of reflection, and it's like I cannot believe that like I lived that life. I know. Like I. <laughs> Not only live that life. So when I was in Middlesex County, when I had got arrested, it was a heat wave. Okay. And in typical Floridian fashion, I was wearing a pair of cargo shorts, Mm. a thin button up shirt and flip flops. Okay. In Jersey. Okay. When I got arrested. All right. When I finally got released, dead of winter. Okay. (laughs) And they released me at eight o'clock in the morning. I said, I'm out. And I'm walking down the street. With my bag in flip flops and shorts. And keep in mind, when I got arrested, I was 113 pounds. Yeah. I left 180. Whoa. The biggest I've ever been in my life. Really? Yeah. And I was, my, my cargo shorts were Daisy Dukes now. <laughs> my shirt, I couldn't even button up. It had like the holes from like the button stretching. <laughs> yes. My sleeves were up to here and I'm in flip flops walking through the snow, happy as can be. That's so funny. And a truck pulled over. And it was the craziest looking Asian dude I have ever seen in my life. And he said, you just got out to county? And I said, yeah. He said, hop in. And I said, okay. And I got in the passenger seat. He said, how long did you do? I said, 11, 11 and a half months. He said, I just got out not that long ago. I did 11 years. And I said, for what? And do you know what he said? Murder. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. He wasn't... He had got arrested for something, and then when he was incarcerated, he murdered somebody, like an inmate. And they they let him out? They gave him eight years. Yeah, because they don't really look at inmates as humans. That's amen. um, 
he ended up doing 11 years and he's like, you want McDonald's? And I said, sure. <laughs> and he took me through the drive through and bought me um, uh, Egg McMuffin and dropped me off at probation. Wow. Yeah. That's very cool. But like to look at like that story and like nowadays. Yeah. No. My girl Paige picked me up from jail and took me through Taco Bell and I cried while eating my crunch wrap, dude. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> I cried right into my crunch wrap. Damn. It was so salty from my tears. Best crunch wrap ever. Mm. Uh. And a cigarette. <sighs> I had gone 120 days without cigarettes. Like I should have just not picked them up again, but I did. And it was oh, that feeling. Yeah, there's nothing quite like it. There's nothing quite like it. When you have your freedom taken away and then you get it back, it's uh, quite the experience. It really is. And that's why it's like, you know, I, I have mixed emotions about my past, right? Because obviously my past has shaped me and molded me to the man that I am today. Mm -hmm. And it's the reason I have the life I have today, so I wouldn't change anything. Right. Um, but, like, I look back at that stuff, and I'm like, you know what? Like, I got to experience that. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, having your freedom taken sucks. Oh, yes. But it also gave me a, a certain empathy, a certain amount of appreciation for the little things. Yeah. And it's easy to lose sight of that. So easy. But yeah, when you sit, like after this conversation, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to hug my kids. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to have a picnic outdoors. Like it rejuvenated yeah. me. And I needed that. Because you do, you get, you take it for granted. It, you really do. All the little stuff. Feeling grass. Like I could walk out my front door and just put my hand in the grass. I know. And I would have killed somebody to be able to do that in it, 2012. In, in Sarasota County, that was the worst. Because they're, you know, it's just that building downtown so their rec yard is even indoors mm -hmm. and and i used to hear the rain and i'm like god i just want they have like this um concrete kind of like it's it's like windows but they there's like holes in it to like let fresh air in the in the rec mm -hmm. but like you can't actually be outside and i used to try to stick my my finger through the hole just mm -hmm. to feel some rain you know That's and sad. so uh, moral of the story, anybody out there that hasn't experienced that, go get arrested. Don't do drugs. Oh. No? No. What she said. Yeah. Yeah. Just appreciate what you have while you have it. Don't get it taken away in order to appreciate it because you will try to end it all on day three. Yeah. But I do got some uh, good food. No. Only if you're rich. Shit on a shingle. Shit on a shingle. I don't. I don't know. What in you're the saying. comments, if you like shit on a shingle, let me know. Are you keep saying it, and I'm not sure I know what you're saying. It's the air version of uh, biscuits and gravy. But the bread pudding, dude, at Manatee. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so moist. You don't like that word? I love it. Yeah, I don't mind it either. That's interesting. You're the first person that I've met of the woman variety. No, everybody's, I think people do it just to jump on the bandwagon. Like, it's not a bad word at all. You want to talk about words that are gross? Cream. No. No, no, I love cream. I love cream. Okay. Um, your nails are giving me there's no place like home vibes. <gasps> Sorry. Okay. I said the same thing. Yeah, I'm, I've been waiting for you to. Click my heels together. Yeah. They're sparkly red nails and my toes match because I got a pedicure. You know the most interesting part about you having a boyfriend? What? I have not seen you. I've only seen you barefoot since you got a boyfriend. The weirdest thing ever. Before, you would wear like two pairs of socks, Velcro sandals, <laughs> boots over it, Uggs over those, duct taped around your calf, <laughs> and like a jumpsuit. And all of a sudden, you get a boyfriend, and you're like, man, what just wiggling your means? toes. What do you think it means? I don't know, but it's I'm I'm glad you're living free. Yeah, you're living free. Good for you. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think because I thought that it would keep me from getting a boyfriend, but then when someone accepted me, and your CPAP, and my CPAP, yeah. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. He's great. He's so great. I'm digging the table. Yes, he put that together today with a bad leg. 
I'd like to say I helped, but I did not. I can imagine. I did not help. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, Q. Moral support, I'm sure. Yeah. And like I could see like you like every once in a while like, are you sure you don't need anything? But you don't really mean it. And he knows you don't really mean it. Oh, shit. Yeah, come on. He knew? Yeah, for sure. What? Yeah. Why? Because it's you. Wait. So every time I say, do you need anything? I'm not, in, in situations where it requires manual labor, yes. Uh, in building things, <laughs> absolutely. We know that it. it's just, it's like one of those like polite things to say, but yeah. we know you really don't mean it. If it's being there for somebody emotionally or like, do you need like medicine from the store or like food? 1000% you mean it. Yes. Anything that requires you to do something physical or go out in the sun, we know it's just. Okay. Well, that's not even offensive because it's very true. Yep. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. There it is. So much for not having anything to talk about. We should know, Flip. Me and you always have stuff to talk about. That's why we do a podcast together. I know. I wasn't even expecting any of it. No. The way the conversation went? Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Okay. Not at all. I didn't know what... I thought it was going to be awkward. Yeah. And I have like five board games sitting there in case shit hit the fan and we're like doot, 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 twiddling our thumbs. Yeah. But um, all we got to do is talk about jail, dude. We got hours worth of material. I know. Are we going to do an episode in Vegas? Oh, probably not because then we'd have to like take equipment and stuff. Yeah, no. We can go live in Vegas. We could so go live. We will. Yeah. Go live in Vegas, for sure. Yeah. We'll go live in Vegas. There it is. If you're watching this, Easter's already passed. If you celebrate it, I hope you had a great time. If you're the lady at Dollar General, it was nice meeting you. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, and we'll see you next week. Make Hey, listen. Make sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel while you're there. If you like the podcast, leave us a review because it makes us look really freaking cool and we really appreciate it so much. It helps us. Um, we're probably going to get some merch. A very specific. Very specific. Line of merch. Um, so be on the lookout for that. If you want to sit in on these episodes live while we record them, join our Patreon. Everything is going to be linked down in the description. That's exciting. So, so yeah, and uh, anything else? We love you guys. Thank we you so you. much for the support. Thank you for the continued texts. And um, we're still trying to work out the kinks with who is in charge of what social media <laughs> platforms. Uh, don't even get me started. Because I went on. I've been killing it. You've been crushing it on my platforms. Shit. It's okay though. No, no, no. no I, I Which think one are yours? Instagram, Facebook. Your YouTube and TikTok. Yeah. No, I went on Instagram and you had like replied to like 57,000 people. Am I not on Instagram? <laughs> Wait, YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, TikTok. YouTube, TikTok. Instagram, Facebook. YouTube, TikTok. But, uh, but no, I want you to keep going because you've been crushing it. Thank you. Yeah. And I love, uh, we love all your texts and voicemails and fun facts about butthole lips. And there's that. Goodbye. Love you guys.